All right, uh, guys, excited to, uh, to walk you through a new product today. Um, I'm Sam Waddington from Mount Waddington's Outdoors, and this is the new Alpaca Raft Ranger. Um, so as we unpack it here, I'll kind of walk you through what its design purpose is and uh, yeah, and how we set it up. So that was the bag. The whole thing is included. Everything's in there. Um, comes in a handful of different colors and a handful of different densities for fabric as well. So what was happening is there is a larger boat in the line, a two-person boat. It's become a fan favorite called the Forager. And, uh, and people were loving it. The only challenge is a little bit big for one person use. And that's where the Ranger comes in. So those are just sort of some extra components. We'll unpack that. It's got a seat and an inflatable floor. We'll to toss those in afterwards. But basically the features that we want to look at here are the fact that it has some heavy tie down rings, very similar to the Forger. And, uh, and it is a self bailing floor. So it has this zippered in inflatable floor and then these holes that punch actually right through to the bottom side of the boat. Um, and so the idea being that as water comes into the boat or as you're stepping in and out, this one has kind of a hunting application where when you're in and out for fishing and hunting and waders perhaps, you don't need to worry about pulling water into the boat or not because it'll everything will just drain out. Really easy to rinse it down if you've got dogs in the boat, that kind of thing. Um, and I'll go about inflating this thing and show you its actual full size once we're done. So this one here has a cargo fly, comes stock with the boat. So you'd unzip that like every other boat and toss your gear inside prior to getting underway. We're going to open the cap. It's got that back check valve like all the other boats as well, open and closed. We're gonna have it in the closed back check format. And we're gonna close this thing down and get it inflated. So the Forager was really popular, but the challenge with the Forager is it's a little big and a little bit heavy for one person. And yet the other classic hunting boat is the Mule. And uh, it's also the extra large uh, boat for big and tall folks, but um, but the Ranger fits kind of between the Mule and the Forager. So this boat's design is to be an extra, extra large one-person boat, or you could fit two people in it in a pinch, a person and a dog, or obviously for hunting out of and that kind of thing, you can fit a lot of gear and it has a heavier payload. So you can pack out, um, you know, a heavy animal if, you, uh, if you're moose hunting, or elk or something like that solo. This boat has the capacity to take all that weight on the way out, including you and all your gear. So I'm using the inflation bag. There's a bunch of different techniques for it. There's also a bunch of different pumping mechanisms. Um, but basically we're gonna grab a bag of air. I give it a twist to the top and then I'm squeezing it here with my thighs and with both arms just to kind of make sure it's as efficient as possible. So the key here is just to make sure there's no twist in the bottom of the bag when you go to squeeze, just so air enters into the boat nice and easy. So you can see it's a pretty efficient system here. This is a very large boat and it's still coming along nicely. And also if you wanna to try to estimate the volume of your boat, which is something a lot of people ask, like how much gear can you actually fit inside of an alpaca? Well, let me show you. Each of these bags of air is being forced into that boat. And if you were to compare this bag of air with an Expedition backpack, you'd be looking at about 70 liters. And each of these bags is fully going in there. So you can count how many liters your boat can take and estimate the amount of gear you can fit inside of that chamber. But ultimately it's gonna be more than you would ever need for any trip solo. All right, so we're getting close here. And as we near the end, there's kind of that top off pressure where the bag gets hard to squeeze. So I'm gonna undo this here. At this point, if you're paddling bigger white water or you want a top performance, you would actually move over to a, a top up pump to kind of get that like pressure really tight. On this boat, all I'm gonna do is top it up with my mouth. But before I go to top it up, I'm gonna install the floors because that's the next step to make it easier to set up. If you get it really taut before you get all these things in, it can be tough. The floor on both the Forager as well as the Ranger is 
inflated with the bag. So a lot of people are wondering, well, with the holes in the floor, doesn't water just bubble up through? And the concept is that this boat does not draft, so it doesn't sink into the water any more than the floor is thick. So it will at no point, even fully loaded, draft more than that three or four inches, which is the thickness of this floor. So the idea being that even at uh, full capacity, this thing's loaded all the way down, you're only gonna have three or four inches of, uh, of, of uh, draft. And then um, all the water that is in the boat maybe is about a half a liter tops. Um, sloshing around sort of between the boat and this floor. So the boat slip or the floor slips in here. I leave the bag attached because I know that I'm going to top it up. And now that's taut. Unscrew the bag. Now we're gonna get into a mouth inflation. This boat, obviously, if this were to flip, you don't want this floor floating away. So it does have a zipper to actually attach it to the floor. I'm gonna get in here and top this up with my mouth. The floor didn't need much, just one breath should be lots. The boat, however, needs more. It's getting a little bit soft, so we'll give it a top up. And you can really see the size of this next to me. I'll stand it up in a minute here. You can hear that valve pop back and that's preventing the air from spilling out of the boat. There is a little bit of a bleed. You can actually feel it and you can definitely hear it if you get your ear nice and close. But again, the back check valve, the blue back check valve is not actually meant to stop all the air. It's just meant to pause it long enough to get the cap on. The rubber seal in the cap is technically the actual seal for all alpaca boats. Alrighty. So that gets this thing to about one and a half, maybe two PSI if you blow really hard. And, um, and what you'd wanna do is if you need this thing more rigid, you'd take it up to about two and a half or three PSI and that's done with an external pump. So you can see the size of this boat next to me and um, really nice size here. It's, uh, it's big enough to fit sort of that one person, one person plus, and then Showing you these auto bailing holes uh, is the other part of this. So a little pro tip, let's say you're paddling down a river and then you enter out at the ocean or a lake, similar to what we're standing in front of here. For flat water paddling, all of these holes are gonna catch the moving water and they're gonna create resistance. So what I do is when I come out of a river and I'm using an auto bailing boat, I'll run a thin strip of tape, duct tape normally, down to the end with a little flap so I can actually get it back off and it plugs all these holes. But if you're not taking water in on the top end, now you've got a little bit more of a slipstream, paddles really, really nicely across flat water, get to the other end, rip it off. And then if you do have that residue, if it's been on there for a while, or if it's really warm out, it'll leave a sticky residue. You can take like white gas from your, uh, from your stove if you're running a liquid fuel stove, works like a solvent and takes that right off. So this is the new Ranger. Um, and you can also see it's got some carrying handles. It's got these heavy straps here that allow you to tie gear down as well as up front. And then when we flip it this way, you can see that it has kind of this elongated stern and this rockered bow. And, uh, and that's really gonna allow it to ride through, um, you know, waves in a river, these types of things. So one other component we're gonna add is this seat here, like most alpaca seats, runs on an inflation hose. Alrighty. And this one here has these thin strips. For those of you who've been paddling alpacas for a lot of years, you'll remember that these strips used to be how every seat used to be installed. The concept being you run a thin string up and through these like you're stitching it in, and there's tabs inside the boat that reflect the mirror opposite. You're gonna seat that seat down in the back like this. It's gonna give you just a bit of a lifted platform from which to operate. 
So I'll pop in this boat just to give you a bit of an idea of scale. I'm 5'10", just to give you a reference point here. So here I am inside this boat, and if I'm paddling along, I've got lots of room for gear out in front of me. This strap plate here, a lot of folks actually will run like a deck. So if you're running a spotting scope, or you're shooting from the boat, or you're fishing and you want to land an actual fish deck here on the boat to fillet fish out and those types of things, um, all that's possible. So that's the, uh, that's the Ranger in a nutshell. We're really excited to have it in the line and it's available as of uh, the spring of 21.